We've come to our, the end of our series on Jonah, so the next two weeks will be gift day services. So Rod is going to um, give us the first of uh, two sermons on 1 Corinthians, entitled Vision and Gift. And you will be given an opportunity shortly to respond by giving online. Afterwards, we'll have prayer and intercession led by me, and then we will go into communion, which will also be done by Rod. Now, during the service, you'll also be given an opportunity to take part, and it'd be great to hear from you. So we've got a chat on screen, so please leave a comment, you can leave a word of encouragement or a verse from scripture or even just say hi and welcome. It's, whatever you do, it'd be great to hear from you. Please know if you want prayer, we're there for you. So at the bottom of the screen is a button and if you press that, somebody will be in touch with you to give you one-to-one -one prayer. Now, after the service, please don't rush off because we have online Zoom coffee. So it would be great to hear from you, to, to catch up with you over tea or coffee. And, and so please stay around after the service. Now, that's enough from me. So before we hear from Maddie and she leads us in a time of worship, Let's just uh, settle our hearts and our minds before God and commit the service to him. Lord and Heavenly Father, just want to thank you for your grace and your mercy to us. Thank you for your many blessings. And we want to bless you for your goodness to us by giving you our offering of praise and worship. And so we ask you to be with us in our hearts and in our homes. And we just say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. And we devote this time to you in Jesus name. Good morning, St. Peter's. Let's stand and worship together.
kings and kingdoms will bow down And every chain will break His broken hearts declare His praise But who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's robing with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. Fighting our battles, oh, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow. stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that will stay. Seeds of the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him.
count on one thing and The same God who never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting and The same God who's never late Is working all things out They're Working all things out And yeah choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, that nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names, that nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify by the name of all names, that nothing can stand again. So yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, and yes, I will bless your name. you because you are sovereign over all things and we just want to lift up the various things that have been happening around us and in the world to you first of all just want to bring before you Lord the wars and unrest that are happening in various places Lord can you please be with the people in Armenia and Azerbaijan with the unrest and civil disturbances there? We ask you Lord to be with the people and to bring peace and reconciliation. We also ask, Lord, that it doesn't escalate into bringing in other countries such as Russia and Iran. We just pray that somehow it will be resolved. 
We also want to remember the continual unrest that goes on in Syria. Lord, it seems like we've forgotten that there's troubles there still. But you haven't forgotten that. And so we ask that you'll be with the people. Give them peace and let them know that you are with them at this time. Of course, Lord, we want to turn our eyes to the continual battle we're having with coronavirus across the world. We ask that you will help people to come up with solution, whether it be a vaccine or whatever, Lord. We, we're asking that you give wisdom, good counsel to leaders. And also, we pray, Lord, for the developing countries that they don't miss out on what's happening, that they will also have help. And Lord, we turn our eyes to our own country. We ask that you'll be with our leaders, give them direction, guidance, especially as we know that in various parts of the country there has been big outbreaks in the northwest, Manchester, Liverpool, Bolton, in the northeast, Newcastle, Sunderland, in the Midlands, Nottingham, and of course our own city, Lord, we just ask you to be with everywhere. Wales and Scotland, as we're all dealing with this, that you'll be with people and their families, wherever they may be. We also pray, Lord, that against this fear that is um, evident at times, that you will give us a peace and a calm knowing that you're with us, that we don't need to fear because the Lord our God is with us. Lift up before you, Lord, Harrow, that you'll be with us in Harrow, with all the churches meeting today, and also with one church, Harrow, as it's um, continues to, to grow and develop as that you'll be with all the people there. And Lord, as that you be with us in our homes and with our families. Where there is need, Lord, whether it be financially, healing, comfort, Lord, whatever our prayers and requests, we bring them to you now. And so I just want to take a moment for you to bring your prayers to God. So Lord, that I ask that you'll hear our prayers and hear our requests. And we just thank you that you are a God of mercy and a God of love. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hi, my name is Julia and here are some church news. Number one is our APCM, which means that we're gonna hear about what happened in the last year of the church. So if you're interested at all, at all in St. Peter's and what happened in the last year, can I please invite you? It will be on the 21st of this month at 8 p.m. and it's just gonna be an hour on Zoom. It would be great if you can join to welcome the new PCC as well as other just bits and bobs that are quite important if you're a regular member 
to this church. Number two is our bright party. Every year this happens when everyone else is celebrating Halloween, we want to give an alternative which is called the bright party for kids to celebrate the light instead of the darkness. And yes, if you have families around you, if you have kids yourself, please make sure you are aware of this date. You can actually book tickets to get a goodie bag that you can pick up at the church and then take it home, watch a live stream which is quite interactive with that goodie bag. So it's really an amazing job that Juz has fought through there and it would be amazing if you book those tickets, either send an email to Juz to get some more information or go to the Eventbrite page that has been made especially for the Bright Party. Number three is a one church prayer day. So last Sunday we were celebrating together and sharing some resources between the three churches of one church, which is St Paul's, Christchurch and us as St Peter's. So we thought we also want to share prayer and that is what we invite you to. That will be on the 6th of November, so a bit less than a month still. We will give you some more information soon, but just a heads up that that will be happening. And then number four, lastly, we're going to watch a video in a minute. And I quickly want to introduce this. So in the last week, I watched a documentary on Netflix called David Attenborough, A Life on our planet and has really shown me again how important it is to take the climate crisis seriously. We don't just live in a time where it is trendy to live a, to consume a plant-based diet and it is not just trendy to change your resources to renewable energy, it is actually necessary and it is important and it's serious and I would love it if we all take it seriously. So the organisation um, London Citizens has come up with a campaign. It is called Just Transition and a few members of our congregation have signed up that they would do a meeting where you can join via Zoom to say what is important to you in order to make to, to give that climate crisis um, some attention. And it would be amazing if you watch this video and maybe even take part. It is a really important topic and it would be great if you could join. Our planet faces major threats. And as London citizens, we feel responsible to our future generations. Today, we have the power to choose climate policies that will restore our city, create 100,000 new jobs and protect our future health. We will achieve this by transforming London into the first just transition city in the UK and by ensuring that the policies of a clean, green city tackles inequality and primarily benefits low income communities. We will start by listening to over 400 leaders from 20 different organisations over three months, in which we will share stories around how energy bills, damp and mouldy homes, insecure work and pollution affect our physical and mental health. We will then workshop ideas and policy options with experts and take our top two Just Transition policy priorities to the London Citizens Delegate meeting in November. And finally, we'll take our plans to the London Mayor Assembly in spring 2021, leading to impactful climate policies and a relationship with the new mayor to redesign our economy, energy, transport and health systems. Be part of the pioneering change in London by signing up today and following the steps on the website for a healthier and more sustainable future. Our grandchildren are counting on it. Good morning. It is good to be with you on this, the first of our vision and gift days. Uh, they happen usually uh, just twice a year, uh, one 
February time, the other around about October time. Uh, and it's an opportunity for us to share together that sense of direction, that, uh, that, um, that direction that we feel God is calling us into as a church and to give us an opportunity to respond to that. Because the truth is, when it comes to money, money follows vision and vision costs money. So you have to talk about both of them together. They're inextricably linked, vision and money. So we're having a vision and gift day this week and next week. And uh, this year, there's an opportunity for you to give online. You might see in the top right hand corner of uh, your screen, there's a give button and uh, you might want to make the most of that opportunity to give at some point this morning. In July, uh, the PCC agreed that St Peter's for this season should adopt uh, the One Church Harrow vision as its own. Uh, we were struck by its clarity, its ambition uh, and, uh, and its focus. It says that we want to see 10% of Harrow following Jesus in 10 years. It's an ambitious goal. I don't know about you, but it gets me out of bed in the morning. How are we going to achieve something as extraordinary as that, you might ask yourself. Multiple church planting is the answer. We have begun as Hope Church Harrowview uh, launches publicly today, this morning. We pray for them as they uh, step out and step up into that new ministry and mission. Uh, Mosaic is going to be launching uh, in the new year and we hope that they are both uh, just the first and second of many church plants in the decade ahead. How are we going to make sure that we can sustain this kind of church planting? Because of course it's a costly thing. We say goodbye to people um, and uh, there's a real challenge as people say yes to that sense of calling on their lives. And we've recognised as One Church Harrow three priorities that we want to pursue. Evangelism, sharing our faith, sharing Jesus, disciple making and leadership development. And we're making progress when it comes to disciple making. Uh, since the lockdown, over 70% of you are now in circles. That is an extraordinary percentage. And I have heard countless stories of how they have been impacting your lives and uh, keeping you going through this really challenging season. It's amazing. Uh, in terms of leadership development, uh, we ran the Growing Leaders course last year and uh, in 2021 we'll be launching our very own leadership development program. We're calling it SHAPE uh, because we want to create a leadership pipeline uh, that produces frontline missionaries in their workplaces, uh, missional community leaders and church planters. Of course, evangelism remains the great challenge. For 10% of Harrow to follow Jesus, we need to reach everyone everywhere. How do we do that? And how do we do that during a pandemic. We've had a go. Uh, we saw uh, extraordinary fruit from Street Church that Claire and Malcolm ran from their car as uh, 50 or 60 neighbours joined them uh, for church for a number of Sundays during lockdown. Uh, we have been able to practically support and meet the needs of our neighbours during this season. Uh, over the summer, we ran the Bags of Hope project and fed uh, over 80 families in need in the Harrow area. But it's easy, isn't it, to turn inwards, to prioritise our own survival as a church. It's perfectly understandable. But I and the PCC believe this is a season in which we need to think about how we reach out. Why don't we share our faith? Why do we find that difficult? What is it that holds us back? It often seems to me there are, there are kind of three, uh, what one writer describes as three defeaters uh, that can mean that we keep our faith 
to ourselves. Three reasons why we don't share Jesus. The first is that there's something inside of us that says, do you know, that's what experts do, evangelists. So we're afraid of getting it wrong, uh, of, uh, that we don't have all the answers, that uh, we'll get caught out and feel stupid in front of our friends. A second reason perhaps is we feel that's what extroverts do. Those who have charismatic personalities, who stand up on stage, who are confident. And as a result, we feel we have to learn a script that can often feel quite formulaic and unnatural. just doesn't feel real, so we don't really want to go there. It's too awkward for us. Or perhaps a third reason might be that it's really just what leaders do in positions of power. People have influence, people of status or celebrity if you like, and who are we to say to someone else, why don't you believe this? Isn't that simply self-righteousness, this sense of superiority that we kind of feel uncomfortable with instinctively? But this morning what I want to suggest is that it is these very reasons why we don't share Jesus that are actually the reasons why we should. And I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and I hope you'll see what I mean. So if you've got a Bible with you, why don't you turn to Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, we're going to be reading from verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith may not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we're going to think about three things this morning, a strange people, a strange preacher, and a strange proclamation. Let me pray before we dive into the text. Father, we thank you for your word, this extraordinary correspondence with the Corinthians that Paul has written that speaks to us still today. Lord, we pray, send your Holy Spirit to open our eyes and our ears to hear what you have to say to us, to see your face in these pages. In Jesus' name. Amen. So that first few verses, verses 26 to 31, Paul talks about a strange people. God 
you see, uses strange people to reach everyone everywhere. He reminds the Corinthians who they are because they'd forgotten that. You see, they value wisdom, education, knowledge, intelligence. They want to feel clever. They want to be well informed. But Paul reminds them, actually, they're not wise. They never were. They value power and influence and authority, but Paul reminds them they're not influential either. They value nobility, celebrity, fame, charisma, status, so they could feel self-righteous and superior to those less than them. But Paul reminds them they're not noble either. Actually, God turns our expectations upside down. God chooses the foolish things to shame the wise. God chooses the lowly things, says Paul, to shame the strong. God chooses the things that are not, that are nothing, to nullify the things that are. What's he talking about? He's talking about us, the broken, the wounded, the hurting, the ignorant, the poor, the excluded. If you think you have nothing to offer, you are the kind of person that God is looking for. If you think you could never effectively share your faith, you are the kind of person that God is looking for. You see, the first reason why the reasons why we don't share Jesus are actually the reasons why we should is that God chooses and uses strange people like you and me. But Paul also talks about not just strange people, but a strange Preacher. You can see it in chapter 2. God uses strange ways to reach everyone everywhere. He reminds the Corinthians of what they heard. They value wisdom, eloquence, rhetoric, great communication, and yet Paul comes with a simple message. They value power, signs and wonders, an overt super spirituality. But Paul comes in weakness. They value nobility, charisma, celebrity. But Paul comes with fear and trembling. Again, you see, God turns our expectations upside down. Paul is not the charismatic evangelist doing ministry on behalf of a broken congregation. He's not the professional. He's not the elite. He's not trained. He's not skilled. He's not got qualifications. He's just like them. So if you think you're not an evangelist, if you think you're better off leaving it to the professionals, you're the kind of person that God is looking for. Because that means he can demonstrate his power rather than you demonstrating yours. That means that the faith of those you speak to rests on the power of the Spirit of God and not on your persuasiveness. So the second reason why the reasons why we don't share Jesus are actually the reasons why we should is that God chooses and uses not just strange people but strange preachers too. And thirdly, it's a strange proclamation. We can see this at the beginning of our reading and right at the end. God uses a strange message to reach everyone everywhere. He reminds the Corinthians of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. It is, he says, the testimony about God. It's the message of what? Of glory, of power, of majesty. Of judgment? No, it's the message of the cross. Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's the gospel that Paul preaches. And this very message turns our expectations upside down. Because it's foolishness to those who are perishing, isn't it? What was preached, Paul says, is foolishness. A stumbling block to Jews, foolishness to Gentiles. This is the foolishness of God, the weakness of God, says Paul. And let's be honest, it is a crazy message. It's ridiculous. It is unbelievable. It's implausible, preposterous, unthinkable. Surely no one could ever believe such a tale as this. 
No one could take it seriously. But this is the way God works. This same message, it is the power of God. It makes foolish the wise, it has power to save. It is wiser than human wisdom, stronger than human strength. Jesus Christ crucified. He is the one that makes wrong things right again. He is the one that makes us holy. He buys us back and brings us freedom from those things that enslave us. And everyone, everywhere, when they respond, they respond to the gospel. It's not because of us. It's not because of you. It's not because of your skill or your knowledge or your personality. It's because of the power of the Spirit of God. You see, this message, you can't reason your way towards it. It doesn't make rational sense. A God tortured, executed and killed? This is revelation. This is an apocalypse, an appearance of God himself. This is an unveiling by the Holy Spirit. And so the third reason why the reasons we don't share Jesus are actually the reasons why we should is that not only does God choose and use strange people, strange preachers like Paul, but ultimately he chooses and uses a strange proclamation, the gospel itself. So in that sense, the worse we feel about sharing our faith, the more powerful God is, the better off we are. So in that sense, really, all of us, we are without excuse. But how do we share this strange gospel. And just as we come in to land on this vision and gift day, I just want to give a few practical things, some of which you can do, some of which we hope to do together, and we need your help to make that possible. What can you do? Quite simply, connect with your neighbours. We can't get everybody into church, uh, so we need to take the church to everyone, everywhere. We're going to try our best to fit as many people in as we can. So we've reached capacity at our in-person services. So we're going to multiply to two morning services in November uh, because we want to make sure each one of uh, the, those who are attending our in-person services can invite a neighbor, a friend or a member of the family. So we want to have space to invite others. If you haven't yet uh, come to an in-person uh, service, you might like to give it a try. Come November, see how you feel, see what the situation on the ground is by then. Second thing to think about is Christmas is coming. Uh, and so uh, in December, throughout the season of Advent, we want to create an Advent light trail uh, across the parish. So if you've got a window facing the street, we'd love you to create a, an Advent scene, a Christmas scene, and light it up so it can be seen by all your neighbours. And we will encourage um, people living in the area to travel around and, and just hear, you know, experience a little bit of the Advent message. We're not going to be able to hold our carol service as we normally would this year. Uh, and so we are going to take it out on the streets and do street carols. And so we're going to provide each one of you with the resources you need to do carols on your own doorstep and to flyer your street, encourage your neighbours to come out and join you and then give you what you need so that you can uh, sing some carols together, uh, played out over a loudspeaker on your car and share a brief message uh, of Jesus. We want to have everything recorded for you so it's as easy as possible and all you need to do uh, is let your neighbours know the time and the place so they can join you for that. We want to encourage you as much as possible uh, where we are holding uh, Christmas services so we will be having uh, Midnight Communion and Christmas Day uh, to invite your families to come and join us. Uh, the rule of six means that it's difficult for families over Christmas 
but the rule of six doesn't apply to church. So that's a good place to invite your families to come and join you this Christmas. In Easter 2021, we are going to be launching something called One Church Everywhere. And uh, you may have noticed we've been working towards it. Last week, we had our first One Church Everywhere morning where we provided uh, a number of online resources, some worship, a talk, uh, an interview and some uh, stories uh, from across the three churches uh, that are designed to ultimately be used by you wherever you are. So at the moment, we're starting off uh, in our Sunday services, whether that's online uh, or in person. Uh, but eventually, come Easter time, our hope and our prayer is that actually we will all be doing church uh, at home. Church everywhere. One church everywhere. And so instead of being uh, three gatherings, we will be a network of house churches, uh, just like the early church. And we thought, uh, let's give it a go and see if that same strategy might work for us. So instead of coming to church once a month, it'll give us an opportunity to do church, to be church where we are for everyone, everywhere. What can we do collectively? Those are some of the things you can do. What about all of us? Well, one of the things we've recognized during lockdown is that people connect online. 80% uh, access church online in some way. That might be through Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. And uh, that means that digital media matters enormously. Uh, and the way we communicate, the way we present ourselves, uh, how we uh, light uh, our films, how they sound. As soon as you notice the sound's not quite right, you let us know. It makes a difference. And so getting the right cameras, the right uh, microphones, the right lighting makes an enormous difference. It gives you confidence to post and share uh, resources that we're putting out online. And we'd love you to keep doing that and to do that more as we produce more things online. But we value meeting in person, but we recognize that's not possible for everyone and we want to be inclusive, as inclusive as we can, and we want to encourage engagement. We don't just want you to consume church online. We want it to feel as live as we can. And, uh, and so in person, we've uh, begun to introduce uh, live communion, a live talk. We love to introduce live worship too, and we'd love those of you who feel comfortable at home to feel as much part of that experience as you can. Uh, and actually, most of what we do at the moment is pre-recorded during the week. It takes an enormous effort to edit all of that together, uh, and we just don't have capacity to do that work during the week and then uh, worship uh, live with all of that entails on a Sunday. So what we want to do, if we can, is we want to live stream rather than pre-record. Um, all the statistics suggest that live streaming is the most effective way to engage with people online. It stops people uh, as they're scrolling down through their Instagram feed or their Facebook feed. But live streaming is costly. The equipment is expensive. And it's my hope that uh, in this gift day, uh, you will agree with me that uh, actually in this season, investing in our technology so that we can uh, get our message out there as effectively as possible, that we can give everyone everywhere that same experience of gathering together uh, as much as we can, uh, that live streaming uh, is a key plank in that strategy. And so I'd love us uh, to give today uh, towards that. And I'd love us to see if we can raise £10,000 uh, towards uh, technology and equipment that we need in order to engage in the mission that God is calling us to. So those are some of the ways that you can get involved, uh, some of the things that we hope uh, we want to do. 
And I just want to encourage you to have a think and a pray about how you might give uh, towards uh, our mission so that we can get this strange proclamation, this strange message out to those that need to hear it. Let me pray. Father, we know that sharing our faith is costly, it's difficult, it's fearful, it's not an easy thing to do. And we want to say thank you that you choose to use strange people like us, without knowledge, without power, without status. Thank you that you you don't expect us to have great skill and charisma and personality, but you use any of us, however stumbling we might be over our words, so that your spirit can show his power. And Father, thank you that all we get to do when we feel we can help us is embody the reality of the message of the cross itself. And it is that that is the power of God. And Lord, we long to be able to get that message out to everyone, everywhere. And so Lord, as we consider how we might respond to this vision and gift day, Lord, just speak to each one of us where we are right now. As we consider investing in our technology so that we can Include everyone as we gather together and reach out to everyone, wherever they might be. So the music's going to play in a moment. And as uh, you stand to worship, you might think, actually, no, it's time I'd like to give. And you can do that either through clicking on the link in the top right corner of your screen if you're watching uh, online. Uh, if you'd like to continue watching online and that would interrupt you, uh, then uh, you can use your phone. Just go onto our website, stpetersharrow.org, and uh, there are two lines uh, up uh, uh, in the right-hand corner. Click on those and right at the bottom of your screen on your phone, uh, you'll see a tab that says Give. That will take you through to Church Suite and you can use that to, uh, to give um, uh, you know, using your on an online payment. Uh, it's all secure uh, and it will go straight to uh, the St. Peter's bank account. Uh, so let's worship. Do take time to think about how you'd like to give. And uh, if you've got any questions uh, or uh, you'd like to speak to a, a member of the staff team, do join us for Zoom coffee afterwards. That would be a great opportunity to ask any questions that you might have.
time for us to enjoy fellowship with one another as we break bread together. So if you've got some bread and some wine uh, in your home uh, with you, now is the time to bring it out and have it ready uh, as we eat and drink together and enjoy this spiritual communion as the Holy Spirit binds us together uh, as the body of Christ, wherever we are uh, in time and space. So let me pray. Uh, we'll read scripture together and then we'll eat and drink. Father, we want to say thank you for your grace and your mercy to us. Lord, as we are honest with ourselves and with you, we recognise our own shortcomings, our failures and disappointments, our willfulness, our rebellion and our sin. We want to confess that before you, Lord, and say that we are sorry. And we want to thank you so much that we can know the joy of your forgiveness and reconciliation and new life in Christ. And so, Lord, as we eat and drink this morning, as we break bread together, send your Holy Spirit on us that we might know that we are forgiven people, children of the living God, precious in your sight, that you have reconciled us to yourself in the person of your son. And it is his death, his resurrection, his ascension that we remember together in this meal that we share. So I'm going to read from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Chapter 11. I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So if you've got bread and wine, uh, that you'd like to share uh, as an individual, as families together, do eat and drink with me. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let's just remain in the Lord's presence. Let's enjoy the gift of Himself given to each one of us, His children. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We thank you that you draw near and meet with us by faith. Just receive from him. Lord, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. 
our service is coming to a close. I'm going to say the blessing in a moment, but don't forget there is Zoom coffee afterwards. If you've got any questions about gift day or the vision, uh, that's a great opportunity for you to uh, just ask some of those questions you might have. Um, if you'd like to give, uh, do take a moment just as the service comes to a close to click on that link in the top right hand corner. Uh, it would be wonderful if you could uh, be part of what God is doing as we work together uh, to be church for everyone, everywhere. So uh, let me pray God's blessing upon each one of us this morning. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.